So then guys, this is crazy news. As much as we've got the new MacBook Air that's come out today, we've also had the release of the brand new Mac Studio being updated with the M4 Max and the M3 Ultra. So you heard me right there guys, the new Mac Studio has the M4 Max and the M3 Ultra. What may sound a little bit weird there, because obviously we've got kind of a previous generation high chip and the kind of latest generation sort of top laptop chip. And today I want to discuss with you what the differences are between the last generation M2 Ultra to this new M3 Ultra in the Mac Studio. So today we're going to do an M3 Ultra Mac Studio versus the M2 Ultra Mac Studio review of specs. And with that, let's begin. So then guys, to begin with then, as you can see right here on the left side of this comparison, we will have the Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra and on the right side, side, we will have the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra inside of it. And first of all, let's talk about the size of the Mac Studio. So the Mac Studio hasn't changed at all in its design language now. We're now technically on the third generation of it. And the height of this is 9.5 centimeters for both of these. And then the width of them is 19.7 centimeters, just under 27 centimeters there. And obviously that is the width and also the depth on this so exactly the same there on that it's a nice cube shape what we definitely have got here with this now moving over though to the actual weight of the Mac Studios now funny enough the M3 Ultra is ever so slightly heavier and I'm really really talking ever so slightly as you can see here it is now 3.64 kilograms compared to 3.6 kilograms. I've double checked this to make sure that obviously the 3.6 wasn't rounded down or anything like this for the M2 Ultra. Nope, it definitely is slightly heavier for the M3 Ultra. But to be honest, if it's sitting on your desk and everything, you really are not going to notice this 0.4 you know, grams of difference. It really is not going to make any difference, this sort of 40 grams that we have got here. It's it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. But the next question you guys are probably wanting to know is obviously if I've got this on my desk, how many monitors can I plug into it on the supported monitors? Well, I've got you some great news with the M3 Ultra. It definitely seems it has gone up now. We can now actually support up to eight times 6K screens running at 60 hertz. And also you can run actually eight times 4K screens running at 144 hertz on this. This is incredible what you can do. Obviously you're going to have to have some adapters and all some daisy chaining going on to make this work but that is crazy news to hear compared to the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra well that can support up to five screens at 6k obviously at 60 hertz or 144 hertz at 4k it can support five of them but we definitely have got three extra screens here we have got supported now with the Mac Studio M3 Ultra but the big thing that you guys are wanting to know, obviously, is the processor, the CPU. What changes have we got right here? Well, we definitely have got some changes. And this is the total amount of cores that you can get. This is the up to amount I want to show you. This is the highest spec of cores that you can actually pick here. So now with the M3 Ultra, you can actually pick up to a 32 core CPU with this. And eight of those cores are the efficiency cores and everything else is the performance cores in this. What is crazy. And you can also pick up to an 80 core GPU too. What is brilliant news to hear. Compared to the M2 Ultra, well, that had a 24 core CPU and again, eight of those were the efficiency cores, what you had inside, everything else was performance cores, but you actually also got up to 76 cores on GPU. So we've gained four more cores here on the M3 Ultra for GPU, but yeah, definitely we can see we've gained an extra eight more performance cores here on the M3 Ultra over the M2 Ultra. And then obviously we're getting all the extra efficiencies, all the extra speed and everything. So definitely we're gonna get some more power here out of the Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra upon its release. 
But then for RAM amounts, this has also changed too. So the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra inside of it, this used to come with a standard amount of 64 gigabytes of RAM, and you could actually pick 128 or 192 gigabytes of RAM inside of it for this model. But this has completely changed now with the Mac Studio M3 Ultra. It's crazy. You can actually pick 96 gigabytes as the base amount. This is what you'll get as the standard lowest amount of RAM, almost 100 gig there. What is brilliant news. And then obviously you can pick 256 gigabytes of RAM. What's that? Massive jump up, and you can even go for half a terabyte of RAM now. 512 gigabytes of RAM inside of the M3 Ultra Mac Studio. What is amazing. But then moving on to storage, well, nothing really has changed here whatsoever. We actually have the same storage configuration even with the M1 Ultra. So with the M1 Ultra and the M2 Ultra and the M3 Ultra now, it starts out at one terabyte if you go for the Ultra chip. Obviously, if you go for the Max chip, then or the M4 Max, or if you had the M2 Max before, or the M1 Max, this starts at 512 gigabytes. But you've got the choice with Ultra from one terabyte all the way up to eight terabytes of storage, what is brilliant, but I will say this, it will cost you a lot to scale this up, also with the RAM and also the cores. But for ports wise, nothing really has changed here whatsoever in the actual number of ports, but it's more to do with the compatibility of the ports and what they can do now. So we still actually have six USB-C ports here with the Ultra chip, and obviously four of these are on the back of the Mac Studio and two of them are on the front. Now the six ports on the Mac Studio M3 Ultra are now Thunderbolt 5. So this allows up to 120 gigabits per second transfer speeds, Whereas the Mac Studio M2 Ultra still has Thunderbolt 4 ports and goes up to 40 gigabits of speed there. But definitely if you want to plug in external drives or things like this, obviously it needs really, really fast pace, you know, going back and forth. Well, you've definitely got that with the Mac Studio M3 Ultra. Something else to also note here is now for the first time with the Mac Studio, that obviously 10 gigabit ethernet is now standard across the whole Mac Studio, whether you get the Max or if you get the Ultra now, it's 10 gigabit ethernet. Whereas before with the Mac Studio, it was one gigabit on the Max, but then obviously if you went over to the Ultra, then obviously this would have to go up to 10 gigabits, what you'd actually get there instead. Moving on though to the operating system. Now, obviously both of these can run Mac OS 15 Sequoia, as you can imagine with absolutely no problems whatsoever. These are two of the most powerful sort of Macs out there right now, desktop ones. So yeah, no problems here whatsoever. Now, one thing that I would be saying though, with operating system updates going into the future, more than likely the Mac Studio M2 Ultra will probably get about another say six years of updates, but the M3 Ultra is more likely to get seven to eight years more of updates going into the future there with this. So you just be aware of that. That's what Apple will probably do. For speakers wise, well, it's unlikely you're gonna use the speaker inside of a Mac Studio, but if you did need to use it, there is a little one built in there. But obviously, personally, you'd use speakers on, say, a monitor or external speakers instead, but it's nice to know it is actually inside. For Wi-Fi technology, nothing has changed here whatsoever. It was quite a surprise. I actually thought Apple would update this, but we've actually got Wi-Fi 6E in both of these desktops. Now, probably the main reason is that obviously if you are gonna be transferring files, you'll be using that 10 gigabit ethernet. Like with my Mac Studio, that's exactly what I do. I hardly use the Wi-Fi capability, apart from maybe transferring files onto it by air sort of port sort of transfers and things like that. Nothing else really I use it for. The same with Bluetooth speeds as well or technology it's on bluetooth 5.3 for both of these mac studios no differences here either then finally onto the price well the mac studio with the m2 ultra came in with at 3999 us dollars well the good news is the m3 ultra also is 3999 us dollars so with that m3 ultra you will get the one terabyte model you also get the lowest amount of base cores not the up to top amount and you would also get inside about 96 gigabytes of RAM. Whereas with the M2 Ultra, you get the 64 gigabytes of RAM, obviously the lowest amount of cores, obviously on the M2 Ultra, and also one terabyte of storage too. 
The last thing I just want to quickly say is sadly there has been no Space Black introduced from the Mac Studio, something that we all wanted but sadly hasn't come. Apple have retained just to keep the silver colour for now, so obviously it's exactly the same colour and design like I said before for both of these. And with that, will you be buying yourself a new Mac Studio? Now the new M3 Ultra does sound amazing, but a lot of us were expecting to get that M4 Ultra, and I think that would have pushed it out even further. And even if you look at some of these charts here that Apple have provided showing you the difference, look at here when it baselines it against the base Mac Pro that came out in 2019. Look at the M2 Ultra, look at the M3 Ultra, and how much faster it is than that base model. It's not much more, is it? Look at how here, look at the video rendering, sort of speed it's 3.8 compared to four times so really yeah it depends what you're going to use it for i would be saying if you say have maybe a max series so say maybe if you have an m1 max or have an m2 max and you want to go to an ultra series then the m3 ultra is going to be good for you but personally if you're like on an m2 ultra or even i would still say the m1 ultra the m3 ultra to me just doesn't sound like a good enough deal to upgrade at this point and it's the first time i've actually thought that with say and going from an M1 to an M4 or even an M3 obviously because it's not a big jump up there. The only thing, I've, thing I would say is obviously you want an M1 Max Mac Studio and you want the M4 Max Mac Studio. This is possibly a worthy upgrade to get to on that one. But those are my thoughts there. What do you think then on the most powerful Mac that is out there right now from Apple it's about to be released? Will you be getting one or do you think it's worth it or do you think Apple should have not updated M3 Ultra and wait for M4 Ultra? Well, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that as well, guys, it's time to end this video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons like we've done today, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.